I have connected with loved ones through a pendulum, but they ask to use telepathy and I'm just not receiving that way. Pendulums? I know you like pendulums. Pendulums? This, that's how I first came into this. 25 years ago, I picked up a pendulum and thought, my mind is very scientific. I thought, how is it moving? Is it me? Is it kinetic energy from me? Is it telepathic energy from me? Am I influencing it from my soul? Is it my guides? Is it my loved ones? Is it God? All those questions. Now, I have my own sense about what that might be. But if we allow ourselves to not trust fully, I know some people say that they would put their life in, in on the pendulum would say, I would be a little bit dubious about that because I don't fully know. I'm an evidential medium. I like facts. I like figures. I like proof. So for me, the pendulum is not proof that it is my guide. It could be my soul influencing it in the way um, psychically from what I feel. So I'm not going to trust that fully, but I can't dispute that it's not my loved ones and I can't dispute that it's not my spirit team influencing it. What we would say in order to open up is about allowing yourself to sit in that meditative state, sitting in the power, um, allowing yourself to get comfortable with yourself. And when you get comfortable with yourself, then you can ease your mind and your energy. If we think about our auric field, as auric fields touch auric fields, um, that's how the spirit world connect with us too. Let's simplify it down, etheric bodies. So that's simple enough. Um, and then if we are still like a pond of water, then it's easy enough to feel when something else comes into that pond of water. But when our mind's shooting and we're moving about, then our whole being is a little bit upset and we can't tell when somebody else blends with us and when it's just our own mind getting in the way. So we need to not clear our mind, but allow ourselves to settle energetically and allow... Um, and that happens when sitting in the power meditation. So for me, it would be about allowing yourself to settle and not be grasping and reaching and analyzing and pushing and needing and wanting to know, but allowing. That place of surrender is a beautiful place to be in. Not surrender, put your hands up, give up. Surrender as in trust and be. And in that space, generally, you will find the spirit world can reach out and make contact with you. If we look at modern day mediumship, uh, where it evolved from, from the alphabet codes and the wrappings and the reports of Hydesville, um, it's quickly moved from being in, in a physical sense to what we call the mental sense, which is working through the mind, the mental impressions, hence mental mediumship. Um, if you put me on a table, table tilting, the table will stop because it's much easier to work through my mind than it is to move a, a lump of wood. So again, we can interfere with things like pendulums, the table, um, it's much easier to impress upon the mind because we have such a faculty that the mind is a wonderful place, but we also have things called emotions and uh, physicality. So as we get a mental impression, it affects our emotions and has a physical reaction within us so they can get more through to us. So it's very, very simple. It is better to go through the person than it is the object. But saying that though, the human mind can creep in and get in the way of that as well, because we all go, really? Did that really happen? Was that me? Is it my imagination? And these are the early steps of mediumship that we need to learn what is of self and what is from that discarnate world. So very, very good question. Um, for me, though, it's a lot easier to talk to me than it is a lump of wood or through a lump of wood. <laughs>